Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you one of the fights I've done so far for the Tarkan Cup. It was versus a Fargonaut by the name of Catharsis Neurocycle. And they're a well-known Fargonaut. They're one of two of the best Fargonauts. There's two very well-known Fargonauts who are considered to be the best and he's one of them. And funny story, I actually lost versus this very specific Fargonaut in Colo the day before on stream and I got absolutely destroyed. So coming into this fight, I was a little bit worried. And uh, when I lost versus him, I was chance. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to go chance again because that did not pay off. Uh, I was talking to my friend uh, Quinator, who you can see here in the top left, we're actually on Discord during the fight. We're just talking, seeing, <laughs> keeping track of cooldowns together and all that stuff. And he helped me out for sure. And uh, we, I think I kind of made the decision, I think I thought that pushback would be the best. We had a little bit of a, a debate about like which element would be the best, and I decided to go pushback because the thing is, versus Fargonauts, either you go and erode them, or you just full burst them. And the thing is, in terms of erosion, I'm not too confident that I can beat his erosion. Because if he decides to play with um, the drill, his erosion and his damage are grossly going to outmatch mine. And he can tank just as much as I can. So in an erosion battle, I kind of just mentally, uh, you know, just by thinking about it, I assume that I would have lost a battle of erosion versus a Fargonaut. Now, this may or may not be true. But just kind of like in a thought experiment, I decided that, you know what, if I were to face this uh, Fargonaut in <laughs> in an erosion battle, I would lose. So I said, okay, I want to go full damage. And full damage, you have a few options on Ekflip. I settled for pushback, which is a debatable choice versus um, Fargonauts because they can keep you really far back or they can pull themselves very far back. But I figured with the size of the map, it's possible that I kind of block him in certain corners and I don't really let him get away. And uh, we're going to see if it paid off. I'm not going to tell you if I won or not. But anyways, here we go. So just really quick before we continue, uh, take a quick look at the build. So I'm doing this pushback uh, strength slash pushback element. And he's going to be strength with a Jahash cape with no crit base. Now I did put a little bit of crit base, but not that much. So it didn't end up mattering that much that I didn't put it. I also did not put pushback res. So if he happened to be uh, pushback damage, then I would have gotten screwed. Also, if he happened to be agility, I would have gotten screwed because I stacked in the first three elements and not in agility. And the reason is because you have to make sacrifices somewhere. So I kind of hedged my bets and I assumed that he would not play pushback and that he would not play agility. And we'll see if it ended up uh, paying off for me. One thing I really made sure to have in my set is initiative, which is not very standard in pushback builds. Typically, they're very low initiative. Uh, I'm not going to show you the actual build that I use because I want to kind of keep it... <coughs> case I want to use it in the future until the end of the tournament. At the end of the term tournament, I will do a video where I show you guys all the sets that I use and talk about why I made certain choices and such. Anyhow, enough uh, enough yapping, here we go. So reverse the Fargonaut, turn one, I have really nothing to do except rush. So I'm just going to take center map and uh, there's, no, there's no boosting really um, as a pushback damage character. Now you can boost with Bravado, which is five AP, but you have to cast it on an enemy and it gives you hundred pushback damage. But you have to cast it on enemy and there's no possibility of that here. So instead I just rush, put out, put down my cowot, and I'm kind of waiting for a feline spirit next turn. You also see that I do Fate of Egg Flip just on the air. The reason I do that is so that I can get uh, the 8% crits, which can always be helpful. You know, if you don't have, if you have spare uh, AP as an Egg Flip, try cast some of your spells. It can help you boost some crits. So you actually, uh, very interestingly here, if you know your lines of sight, there's a line of sight exactly where he went. So it goes, there's a line of sight here and then here. So he took advantage of that to come do seizing, try and kill the cow because I think he predicted that I would jump over. But his damage was not enough. Had he focused seizing on the cow, he would have killed it. And I think it would have been more worth it for him, but he didn't. And that's a choice that he went with. So I'm just going to hop over the cow, feline spirit. I'm going to switch around uh, where my spell is positioned because I'm more used to those shortcuts. And we're going to rush him. So here I'm going to pause for a sec. Uh, it's very important that I finish next time, so I couldn't do uh, Fate of Eclip twice. I had to do Claw of, uh, of Shangol twice because by finishing next time, I actually get to profit from my Emerald Dofus. And interestingly, my set has Lock, which typical pushback sets don't have. So I have Initiative, which they usually don't have, and I have Lock, which they usually don't have. And they definitely helped like alter the course of this fight. If Had he started, it could have gone very differently. And if I didn't have Lock, it could have gone differently. Not saying if I won or lost, I'm just saying it definitely helped me during the fight. A uh, very interesting point here, he took minus 4 MP. Now, this is not something that I had counted on initially, but just a secondary effect of playing pushback as an Echo Flip. If you do Fate of Echo Flip, uh, there's actually an up to minus 4 MP uh, reduction. And he only had about 32 MP loss resistance, AP MP loss resistance. And I guess I got a lucky roll, which gave him a minus 4, which was definitely very, uh, very beneficial because, as I said, 
has a echo flip pushback damage you definitely need to rush and since fargonauts can run you want to avoid that as much as possible so here we go we're gonna see what he's gonna do obviously he wants to evolution his turret he's gonna hit me so you see minus 20 percent erosion and then here was an interesting play he did recursiveness to push himself to the other side of the turret and here's kind of an interesting thing that happened because fate of Xflip, the way it works is it puts a state on you where if you ever take pushback damage you get a random minus up to four mp but they don't stack so i did minus four mp but when he came here and he recursiveness he actually came and hit that wall and you can see the minus four actually changed into a minus two so he actually gained back two mp by doing pushback damage on himself with recursiveness did he count for this i can't say but anyways he got the two mp which actually allowed him to take this position here now the reason he took this position is because in theory now i can't hit him as a pushback damage build i cannot reach him i cannot reach him now because i can't move the drill and uh, normally a way that I would be able to reach him like where he here is by either uh, coming somewhere around here and doing cloth shongle to move with the turret or I could just feline spirit over the turret and come hit him but by being here if I come here and I feline spirit we're actually going to teleport symmetrically so I still would not be able to get uh, into his contact which is kind of unfortunate but it actually opened up another opportunity for me for, which I'm going to exploit instantly which is to kill the drill uh, killing the drill is actually very important you're going to see I'm going to do it a few times during this uh, this match and the benefit of playing pushback is that actually by him finishing there he gave me a zone to hit him and the drill now I don't hit him that hard but it's still you know some damage taken and I end up killing the drill and I still end up getting next to him so was it really worth it for him to go there I can't say for sure but it was definitely an interesting play on his part and I think my reaction was good killing the drill definitely sets him back in the fight because now his ambushes don't hit nearly as hard he loses the erosion aspect and he has to waste AP to build up that whole turret again so now let's see how he reacts he's gonna push me back <coughs> excuse me also interestingly enough uh, since I didn't hit him directly you can see here he actually got plus 10% from the uh, Volba stove so I didn't notice this the first time around but Kind of interesting thing if you only do pushback damage it doesn't remove like ochres and all that stuff thankfully when i do like cloth shongle or fate of egg flip they do count so he does a little bit of mp reduction torpedo pushes me back bath cave and grapnel so here he runs away completely and the thing is for me to be able to do pushback damage on him i would need to reach this black cell and then do cloth shongle to push him here and get myself here and then do it but for me to reach that i need an extra four cells actually i need uh five cells because i have six mp which brings me over to this white diagonal and then to get there i need two four five and to get five mp is not that easy i can give myself two um a two mp through uh, catnip and then i can craps myself but that's total ap cost of six total ap cost of six and then if i come here and do cloth shongle that's eight which would only leave me with 3 AP. I don't have my release, so I wouldn't be able to do that. Now, alternatively, I could put a roulette and claw shongle on it, but by doing that, I actually get rid of my roulette, which is one of the one of the uh, good spells that you have as a pushback egg flip, because you can, for one AP, put it behind someone if there's no walls available to do pushback damage. And it's a really easy way to do pushback damage, so try and conserve that as much as possible. So I see the situation, I'm like, okay, there's not much pushback damage I can do, so instead, <laughs> we're gonna have to go the other way. Instead of taking this as a damage turn, let's take it as a boost turn. So the cool thing about Bravado is it actually works in a zone. So up to two characters, or maybe up to three, I think two is max though. It's a five AP agility spell, but every uh, enemy entity that you hit will boost you 100 pushback damage for two turns. So now I actually, if you look at the chat log or the fight log, you can see that I'm boosted by 200 pushback damage for two turns. And 200 pushback damage obviously is quite significant. And uh, I rushed in. Did that, got the boost, and then I'm probably, gonna, I think I'm gonna put out my cat to start getting up some heals as well. And the cat also has a secondary purpose because not only does it heal me, but it also gives him something else to worry about because if he leaves it on the terrain, then every every turn I get a free Dococo because it's 10% uh, HP heal. Every turn, given that the cat can reach me, which is pretty often since it has four MP and five range on the healing spell. So that's up to nine range that it can heal me. And if they leave it on the on the map, then every turn I get a free Dococo, 10% HP. So it just gives him more things to worry about. And he already still needs to waste some AP to bring back his uh, uh, his drill. And if he also needs to kill my cat, like he's not going to be left with that much AP. So he's going to come and he's trying to do some MP reduction on me here, which is kind of interesting. Put his drill, he evolutioned it. He makes sure, he's, he's smart, he makes sure to put it in line. He knows that it hits across the wall. So by putting it there, he, he makes sure that I take the damage. And then again, his positioning is really, really smart. He comes here and he assistances on the Batis cave to actually block this um, access over here. 
So here I actually cannot hit him directly through pushback once more. It's really annoying on this map. He did that he did that up here with the drill and he did that again where I can't hit him directly. And he also put the trawler here which uh, completely blocked me. However, I predicted that he would play with a trawler versus Echo Flip. So instead of uh, using smell, I used redistribution. What redistribution does is it makes you unlockable for one turn and it's only two AP and then the next turn it makes you gravity. So I was thinking if he was pushback, then me being gravity could be useful. And if he ends up using the trawler, then me being unlockable could be useful. So I decided it's much more useful than smell, which is why I picked it. So first thing I'm going to do is, re is um, redistribution, which is going to make me unlockable. I make sure to get the cat in the zone as well, so he's unlockable. That way he can actually come and heal me. And here we're going to have very interesting usage of AP. So again, I can't hit him, but I can hit him indirectly through the bat scape. So I'm going to hit him once, twice. And here's actually the very interesting play. Right now I'm in line with the uh, drill. And I'm too far for my cat to heal me. My cat can heal up to uh, five. So here, the cat can only reach there and then heal one cell away. Now I could give myself one MP and then go back, which would avoid the um, the drill damage and allow my cat to heal me. But then it wouldn't be hitting. So I actually do something that's got many benefits, and I do craps here on the middle cell. You're gonna see. Boom! What that does is it pushes me back breaks his ivory, gives him really good pushback damage, and takes me away from the drill line and allows me to uh, get healed by my cat. So it's it's the best use of that 4 AP I could have done, in my opinion. So my cat's going to heal me. And here I was kind of debating where I'm going to position my cat. And I kind of decided to go here. Uh, the, the problem is with the trawler here is that if I go here, so here's my dilemma. If I go across the trawler, now I'm unlockable. But next turn, I'm lockable, which means if I go across this line here with the trawler, Next turn, if the fight goes in this direction, then my cat won't be able to join me because it has to do a loop around. And so basically it's going to waste a lot of its MP just trying to run around. So I kind of have to make a decision. Do I think the fight's going to go in this direction or not? I think it's going to stay here. So I end up crossing over, <laughs> if I remember correctly. So he's going to run, evolution his uh, his drill, come do an ambush on me. A lot of damage. I mean, it's only 4 AP and it does minus 1k. So it's quite, really, really quite powerful. And again, he does this not to list spell of minus two MP. I think that was quite interesting. I've never really seen Fognos play with uh, MP reduction, but it was kind of cool. Uh, so then what do I do here? So my cat's there, drills leveled up, kind of a bad spot for me if you think about it. The drills leveled, I'm, I've got less HP than him and I'm far away with MP reduction. So let's see what I do here. I decide, you know what, <laughs> I'm going to rush him. I got to keep up the pressure. So I come, hit, hit, and uh, minus three MP again, if you notice at the end there. And unfortunately, I made the wrong choice with a cat. Had I kept the cat over past the right side of this line, then he would have been able to heal me this turn, potentially. I mean, from here, no. But had he been like here or something, then he definitely could have. Or she. We don't know the cat's gender. <laughs> it's not specified yet. So I'm just going to run around. Uh, he's going to push me back. Uh, luckily for me, it doesn't line me up with the torpedo because it's not a two-cell push, but a, uh, but a three-cell push. I think it would have been maybe smarter for him to do froth, which I think is a two cell push. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is, and it might have been smarter. I don't know what the variant is. Maybe it is that Nautilus MP reduction spell, and that's why he didn't cast it. Anyhow, he pushed me back and starts to go all the way to the other side of the map. So now what are we going to have to do? But I guess chase him? Or no? Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to kill the drill this turn. That's right. So I kill the drill, and I have one AP, and here I kind of have a debate. Uh, internally where either I can go here and try block the line of sight with a roulette and potentially feline spare over the roulette or I just save the roulette and take the L uh, and keep that one AP typically people will make fun of you if you not, don't use all your AP in the turn but sometimes sometimes it's not optimal to use all your AP or all your MP it's more optimal to actually keep it so I think I'm just gonna go and plank behind this wall yeah and there we go and just pass so my cat's able to heal me, that's perfect. 350 heals, that's nice. So he decides to finally kill my cat. I do have the cooldown back though, so we're kind of good. And again, I killed his drill, so he has to evolution it again. He's going to put it in line. <clears throat> Thankfully, I'm on my ivory state, so the damages are cut by half. But he actually kind of messed up, because by putting the drill there, he gave me an easy Cloth Shango uh, target. So what that does, is it allows me to rush him instantly. So boom, I go right next to him, and we just go straight to damage. Uh, I believe, or I might go a little bit of heals. Okay, so I put out my cat and we do a little bit of damage. Obviously, my HP is not too high up. I'm only at like 190, uh, 1,900, sorry, not 190. <laughs> 190 would be kind of dangerous. But yeah, 1,900. I know I'm going to get the emerald, but still I want my cat out because he either has to waste AP on it or let it heal me 10% every turn. Uh, also, interestingly, by blocking him here, like I actually, I, I lock him. So uh, 
One thing that I found out after the match by talking to Quinn and Tork is he's more familiar with Foggernauts than I am. Uh, Foggernauts actually have a minimum range of ambush of four, which means that in this position, there was actually no way he could evolution his Harpooner and also uh, do MP reduction on me. Uh, no, and, and do ambush on me, because I actually move my cat and I block him here completely, which was really good positioning on my part. I completely blocked him here because there was no real way for him to do it. Uh, perhaps he could have recursiveness and popped out here and then done it, but it was not that easy. So he opts to do another kind of move. Here he's going to evolution his turret, and he's really, really blocked here. Uh, I'm not too sure why he didn't recursiveness on himself. I think it would, n it would not have worked. No, it would not have worked, that's why, because it would have had to teleport him symmetrically to this spot, but you can't teleport with a turret. So, yeah, it wouldn't have worked, it would have just done pushback damage on him. So he could not ambush me here, because I blocked him in with a cat, which was really well played on my part, not to uh, not to flatter myself. So he's kind of blocked here. See what he does, he's going to do Kawa and Tide, but that means that this turn I don't take damage, which is kind of cool. And then he's going to assistance on the, um, on the Batscape. Again, kind of make it a little bit harder for me to reach him, in theory. And uh, the drill's gonna hit my cat as well. It's going really low HP, but it's still alive, so that's kind of a point for me. So now this turn, I think I want to keep up the pressure because he's getting a little bit low HP, so I'm gonna rush him again. Boom, boom. Come on, come on, come on. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna hit him, got six AP. So that was uh, Fate of Echo Flip, yeah. And then two AP, I'm gonna protect myself. I could have done Repercussion, but I thought he's locked with uh, less MP and all that stuff. I'm not too worried about damage, he's very low AP, uh, HP, so if he only focuses on damaging me, then I'm probably going to kill him next turn. So instead of using Repercussion, I decide to save the cooldown and instead settle for just uh, Perception. Now, I could have done something better. I could have given my cat one extra MP before running in and done a little bit differently with my uh, my AP. So instead of doing uh, two Fate of Echo Flips, I could have done one and one Release, which would have saved me one MP, uh, one AP, sorry. And that one AP I could have given to my cat, uh, one AP I could have used to give one MP to my cat through Catnip which would have uh, left it at 5 MP, so 2, 4, 5, and then 2, 4, 5, it would have been able to heal me, so I kind of lost heals by not doing that, but it's okay. So he's really low HP, we're a little bit higher HP actually, so, so far it looks like we're winning. Let's see what he's going to do, he's going to release, grapnel, go back up there, and there we go, that ambush is just insane damage, 4 AP, 1k, it's just crazy, and he's going to keep running back I believe. So let's see, he's kind of debating what to do, he's got 2 AP and he decides to block me again with the trawler. Now, one very interesting note, uh, thing to take note of, is the a cooldown for a trawler actually perfectly lines up for the cooldown for a redistribution. What that means is that every time he puts trawler, let's say he puts trawler and I do redistribution to make myself unlockable, by the next time he has trawler available, I also have redistribution available on the same turn exactly. So he can never fully lock me with trawler. Uh, and that's just kind of something to take advantage of. <clears throat> so I'm gonna redistribution again, Think, what am I going to do here? Give myself an MP, put that roulette behind him. As I said, it's really, really good way to get extra damage. So I'm going to put that roulette behind him. Uh, I could have done Claw of Shangle, just push him up against that wall. But I figured by doing this roulette thing, I'm really, really blocking him in. I feel like he's not having a good time by just how blocked in he is over here. So he's getting really blocked in. And I actually throw in a Perception as well, which is very interesting because for 2 AP, uh, Perception heals you for 5% of your max HP. Uh, per enemy target within the zone and here I notice there's a bat's cave, a drill, a cow and him So that's four. I actually get healed by 20% HP for 2 AP, which is really really quite broken. I'll be honest So my cat can't reach me unfortunately had I done the cloth shango method He would have been able to heal me, but you know you win some and you lose some you, you got to calculate your risks and then here I do something <laughs> that I thought was a little bit funny uh, I go here behind so that he can't release the roulette away I was thinking he wanted to release the roulette away. At this point in the fight, I still did not even notice that I locked him. I did not notice that I locked him. So I thought that he could just release the roulette and then run away. But one, I locked him and two, he used release the turn before. So I completely didn't notice that. Now obviously uh, he could have done any other spell like torpedo. That's also 3 AP, he could have pushed it, right? But that was just kind of my thought process. I didn't even realize that I locked him. So let's see what he does here. He's gonna recursiveness on me, which is actually gonna push me down here. And then come ambush again, we're really, really low HP. And here he does a really perfect play. Uh, what he does is he does uh, Tide over on this cow. And I don't know if he knew how perfect this play was, but it was actually very perfect because of this. So what happened is 
Uh, the second turn where you do recursiveness, the first turn you get unlockable, next turn you get gravity. And what gravity means is that I can't teleport over items with feline spirit, unfortunately. So by putting that cow out there, I actually cannot get past it. And unfortunately, you can't do pushback damage to a cow out because you can't move it. So I need to get through this cow out to reach him, but I can't push myself over it and I can't kill the cow out with pushback damage. So I come close. <coughs> I kind of have a look at my damage and I end up killing the cow out, thankfully. And I come in, I think I do, yeah, repercussion, because I'm only at 755 HP. It's very, very dangerous, very precarious situation for me. So I heal myself. Uh, no, I do pre repercussion, and I heal myself as well, and I go lock him. Uh, the lock is amazing, and also I get Emerald Dofus um, 200 shields. This positioning, also, if you know your lines of sight, allows the cat to come heal me from here. So what is he going to do? Let's see. So the thing is, he can't ambush me by attracting here, because ambush has a minimum range of 4. So by putting that Batscape there, and if he pulls himself, he actually cannot ambush me. Which is very interesting. So he can't ambush me, unfortunately for him, which means he has to do something else. So let's see what he does. So he's only at 900 HP, he really has survivor turn, so he's going to do armor plating on himself, kill my cat with 2 AP, and then hit me as well, and come and lock me. Now locking me is not really for the sake of anything, but... Uh, I guess it's kind of to position himself better in terms of pushback damage. So here's where the <laughs> here's where the fuckery begins a little bit. We're really close to killing him. I'm at 1.5k HP. He has approximately the same if you include shields, a little bit more, I think. Uh, and so here I'm like, okay, maybe I can kill him. I got 12 AP. I still got to push him, uh, you know, next to that batscape. But let's see. So I do I do this to break the ivory and get him next to that wall. I do uh, my first first one of those. And then here, I think I do basically like a minimum stat. Um, I do a minimum stat Fate of Egg Flip, I think. Or like my first one was a minimum stat or something. And I'm so close to killing him. And if I had just gotten like better better rolls, I might have been able to kill him, kill him. So here you can see I'm actually super, super close to killing him. But I'm in line with the drill and I'm not going to kill him even if I crit with max stats. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to use my 2 AP for that. What the hell can I do to save myself? Can I have perception? I'm like, okay, you know what? This is a turn to bring out luck because I'm in line here. So if he pushes me and then uh, runs over somewhere and figures out how to do an ambush on me, I'm definitely going to die because the drill's going to hit me behind and there's just too much damage taken. So I'm going to X flips luck. He's going to push me back. Uh, Ivory comes back on. Let's see what he does. He's only at 300 HP though. So he's like so close to being able to, to kill him. Uh, he heals a little bit with Pilfer, gets some shields, a lot of shields, and Dococo on this turn. So he got a lot of shields from the Batscape, and he got Dococo, and now I'm locked as well. So I'm going to Feline Spirit over and see if I can kill him this turn. Because I'm like, okay, come on, come on. Like, I'm on the return of luck, so now this turn I take times 2 damage. So I'm kind of like now or never, right? If I don't kill him this turn, I'm on times 2 damage. And, you know, <laughs> if I'm on times 2 damage versus the Fargonaut that hits 1k for 4 AP, uh, it's not a good time. So I'm going to do this. Oh, this is where I do the minimum Fae of Eclipse. So you can see here I'm at 421. This is it. It was not that previous turn, sorry. So here 721 is the minimum damage I can do with Fae of Eclipse. And if you actually add that up, it was 650 plus 71, which is uh, 721. So I did the absolute bare minimum. And you'll see that it's going to cost me in a second. So I'm going to do a Claw of Shongle here. And oh my, I don't know if you guys saw that. Let me see if I can go just a fraction back. I am 2 HP away from killing this guy <laughs> with release. I'm t he's at 490 and I my, re my release does 488. I was so, so pissed. He said GG. He thought I could kill him. I was like, dude, no. Like in a second, I'm going to say it's just like it was 2 HP away. I cannot kill him. And I'm on 2 times 2 damage. I have a few seconds left on the clock. What am I going to do? I need to survive. So I decide, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my cat behind me. It's going to heal me and lock him in. I'm still on times 2 damage, so I guess it's up to him to see if he can kill me. So let's see. So I'm like, oh, GG to you, because he said GG to me earlier. I was like, nah, GG for you, because you're going to kill me since I wasn't able to kill you, and now I'm on times 2 damage. So let's see what he does. <clears throat> He's going to tide over. He's going to replace his drill. Like, he really got locked there. He was not having a good time. He replaced his drill and grapnel. He placed it in line, which is good, but then he loses the potential uh, damage through ambush. And then for 4 AP, what is he going to do? I think he's probably going to want to protect himself, no? Yeah, so Batscape, pull that in, and then Mooring. And now I'm, I'm locked here with the Trawler, but obviously I have redistribution. So I can't reach him easily with, without the Trawler. I mean, with the Trawler in the way, but I have redistribution. He has a little bit of shields. 
I have 9 AP, can I kill him? Now this turn, I, I kind of mess up uh, because I could have gone here. I had enough MP to come here and directly do pushback damage against the wall. But for some reason, I just completely missed that. And I went here and did Claw of Shongle to bring him up against that wall. So that actually wastes me a few AP where I could have done an extra 200 or so damage. So here I'm going to do Fae of Egg Flip and then release. And the release has enough uh, damage to kill. I, I messed up there at the end, but had I not messed up, it would have been, you know, like the kill worked, but I could have been more safe had I not messed up. Anyways, that's my breakdown of this fight. I know it's a little bit long, but uh, I want it to be as technical as I can. Hopefully you guys appreciated this fight as well. And uh, if I have any more interesting fights coming up, I will show them to you as well. Let me know if I, if I, <laughs> if I rambled too much, if it was too much talking or whatever. But anyhow, uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, leave a like and all that good stuff. I will see you next time. Have a great day and goodbye.